Hello everyone, my name is Nomis and welcome back. We are taking a look at a new game for the channel today, Shortest Trip to Earth. Uh, I'm not sure if this has come out of early access yet. I think it just has. Uh, this is kind of in the vein of FTL, Faster Than Light, which we did do uh, a little bit of a series on way back when, probably uh, a couple years ago at this point. But uh, that game was really fun and I've taken a little bit of a look at this game so far as you can see on the, the, the screen here. Uh, I put about 105 minutes in uh, just to kind of get my feet wet, uh, so to speak. But let's uh, go ahead and retire that game and let's start a new game. Uh, they have these uh, this fate point system. Um, you can see here, fate points that you collected in your existing game will be available at the new uh, start, at the run start. Uh, so essentially you get these fate points as you play the game and then you can use those fate points to unlock different perks the next time you start a new run. Uh, so that's what that's talking about there. So let's go ahead and we'll retire the old game and we'll start a new one and we'll take our shortest trip to Earth. Okay, so we're just going to go, uh, we're not going to go hardcore quite yet. We're just going to go challenging uh, for this run. And then maybe uh, next time around we can take a look and see exactly how hardcore hardcore is. So challenging. Uh, choose your starting sector. We have not made it to obviously any other sectors, so we'll just be starting at the closest star. Captain's log. A warp drive malfunction has landed us in the wrong place. Light years away from Earth. We are almost out of fuel. Supplies are running out. Some crew have been injured and some equipment is not working. Personally, I find all this not too bad because... Okay, well, I'm not sure if there was more to read there. Maybe I skipped through that. These are the ships that we can choose from. So again, similar to FTL. Right now we just have uh, two unlocked. This is the default one. And then uh, I'll unlock this one as I went through the tutorial. So uh, let's take a look at the, the layouts uh, for both of these. Uh, the Tigerfish Utility Frigate is armed with industrial lasers and missiles that starts with a generous set of internal drones and a self-made drone repair bay. Small size of the ship provides an excellent evasion bonus, but offers limited modulation, modular options. Default loadout includes heavily armored nukes. So in the Tigerfish, we've got four weapon slots. We've got two nuke slots, 16 other slots where we can put modules into. Uh, the accuracy inherent shipwide accuracy bonus is 22%. The deflection bonus 60%. Evasion 30%. Uh, so deflection, uh, enemy projectile beam shots deflect more often, doing no damage. And then evasion, enemy shots deviate more from the target. Okay, uh, this one starts with 10 crew, 30 hull points and has a survivability index of 1 out of 10. So very, very base. All right, and then looking at the nuke runner, this special operation speeder is known for tactical survivability. The ship is uh, has good armor and superb evasion, plus increased fire resistance. Optional loadout includes an impressive selection of nukes, the nuke arsenal perk. The small hull offers limited options and is not recommended for claustrophobic crew. So as you can see, quite a bit smaller real estate wise from the tiger fish. This one also has four weapon slots, two nuke slots, 16 other slots. So that's all there is the same as the tiger fish. A little bit different stats here as far as accuracy, deflection, and invasion go. 25% for accuracy, 65% for deflection. Uh, so we got a little bit of a boost there to those two stats. We start off with seven crew instead of 10, 28 hull points instead of 30. Uh, but we do have a survivability index of 2 out of 10. Alright, so I think uh, for the intents and purposes of this first run, we're just going to go with the default uh, first ship, the Tigerfish. So let's go ahead and continue with that. Here's our starting bonuses or our perks that we can choose. And you can see here, this is how many fate points we start with. Now I did carry over some from my last little short playthrough. So we have 36 fate points and we have all these perks uh, that we can choose from and it's got the number of fate points each one requires. Uh, so let's go take a look at some of these. I've kind of, uh, just from the first run through, I 
I think I figured out kind of what categories were in here. So these green ones are kind of resource uh, boosts right off the bat. Uh, so we can have a little bit of extra fuel. We can have some extra organics, uh, more extra organics there. Uh, extra metal, extra synthetics, exotics, credits. Uh, here we got a resource pack plus organics. Over on the right here, you can see what our starting resources are. Uh, so we got uh, obviously full ship hit points. We have 250 organics uh, used for food and healing. Uh, so our crew members will go through uh, organics uh, naturally as we move around and fly to different locations. Uh, as with fuel, obviously we need fuel to move around. Uh, metals are used for repairing the ship. And I believe these are also used in some ammunition types. Uh, as well as the explosive. The synthetics used for repairing modules. Um, the exotics here are rare minerals used for crafting modules or as a alternative currency to Xenodata. Xenodata is the, uh, the, the currency of the galaxy, I guess. And then our starting bonuses, that's just the, uh, the base starting bonuses for our ship there. We have zero extra modules. Uh, there would be extra modules that we could pick as a perk down here, as you can see. Um, let's see here, we got a couple nukes and missile options here, and then we got uh, synthetics cooker. Uh, so this should, yeah, convert module, uh, converter module that can turn organics into the synthetics. We have a module here. Uh, onboard shield generator uh, is replaced with a new, more efficient one. That actually might be a nice one to get. Let's uh, go ahead and select that. Uh, old ship reactor is replaced with a new one, more efficient one, zero chance of malfunctions. Let's take that. Let's upgrade our ship with some of these perks. MK1 sensor replacement. Uh, sensor is replaced with a more efficient one. Not sure if we, ah, well, let's take it. Uh, and then a tiger drone. Heavy space construction drone sold at a premium price, good at repairs, heavy armor. Okay, I think this might be good too. So we're spending a lot of points on modules here. We've selected uh, 16 points total, we have 36 left. Let's go back up through the list and we'll take a look at some of these other perks. We'll try and do this quickly so we don't uh, use up too much time. We have a med bay module. Uh, send crew and installed to installed med bay to heal injuries to spider ability to craft DIY med bays aboard the ship. This one is much more comfortable and efficient. Uh, we can also hire a couple more crew members. Speaking of crew, here is the list of our crew members. So we actually have a lot of uh, drones on board here. Slow repairs, very durable. Slow repairs, very durable. Slow repairs. Gunnery drone. Okay, so these are more like uh, uh, defensive drones if we get boarded. And then uh, heavy duty drone for industrial construction repair. We actually have two of these. Almost fireproof. Maybe, I wonder if we don't need the second one then. I think we might be okay with just one repair drone. And we have a little uh, uh, pet here, a little Buddhist. Uh, everybody's favorite with art artificial, uh, I think it's supposed to say thumbs and brain implants can temporarily wor work at certain modules, but might stop to play, sleep, or eat. And then we have a few humans, scars from physical violence, a veteran ex-soldier, retired war mutants breeder. He only has a hundred years left to live. Mecha engineer, <laughs> who wants to become a sex bot designer one day. He's good at repairs, okay, good to know. And then a young scientist currently self-teaching distributed pleasure optimization. Wow, we've got a, a few sex fiends on our crew. Very interesting. Now, we only have four humans here. I might want to grab one or two more. So we have an adventurer here. Uh, he'll also bring 40 credits along with him. We have a scientist. He'll bring one exotic and 20 organics. We have a cook. Uh, he'll bring 40 organics, but he'll cost one exotic. 
And do we have any other options for personnel here? Doesn't look like it. Just those two. So you know what? Skilled in growing food and extinguishing fires. Both mastered during his years in the Rat Cook University. Rat Cooking University. Alright, let's get the adventurer. And... If I got this guy, I'd be short and exotic, so I'd have to get... Well, either this guy, or just an exotic crystal from you, your Kwani too. So we could do that. So that costs five, as much as this guy. Scientist joins the mission to research an obscure topic, something vaguely related to the meaning of life. They bring along some supplies. All of our crew will be exclusively volunteers despite any payments, reserved, reserving the right to leave any time or ignore any orders. Hmm. This guy's bringing a handgun. I don't know if we need the uh, rat cook, actually. Let's take the scientist. Okay, and let's take a look at some of these others. Uh, so full uh, check and oil change. Plus one to ship max HP, plus ten eight, uh, synthetics. Plus two deflection. That might be, be a nice one. Let's take that. Plus one accuracy, plus two evasion, minus 100 credits. Tactical predictor upgrade. Or we could take this one, tactical maneuver update. Plus two evasion. Let's take that one. Elastic augmentations. Plus four to ship HP. Nine, minus 90 synthetics. That's pretty good. Plus four to HP, but that costs nine. It's quite expensive. Uh, these ones are far too expensive. Armor aug augmentation. Maneuvering jets augmentation. Plus five evasion. Uh, drone repair bay. I think we start off with a drone repair bay, though. The Swearing Small Bot. One drone adds 15 synthetics for spare parts. A small toy drone knows vulgar words in all human languages and draws fire from intruders during internal combat. Perfect obedience, but no abilities beside movement and swearing. Wow. Okay. <laughs> fire safety speeders. Uh, two fire safety drones. Do we have anyone to put out fires? Not really. No, no one specifically there to put out drones. I think we can set anyone to put out uh, fires. Sorry, uh, this guy is almost fireproof. Might be handy though to have some uh, some fire crew on board. Repair and gardening drone. Well, if we had a garden, that might be nice. Uh, I guess what you could do is get the gardening drone, uh, get a garden, a mini growery or a, a DIY garden, and then the rat cook, and then uh, you could have kind of um, food production. That might be kind of cool because you can convert excess food into fuel. Hmm. Improvised laboratory. We might want this for our scientist. Hey. Uh, crew assigned to the laboratory generate Xeno data during ship movement based on their science skill. This lab can be obtained together with materials often used in scientific experimentation. We get 10 organics, 10 explosives, 1 exotic, and then we also, I guess, just create credits? Let's get this. We still have 36 uh, fate points left to spend here. Uh, backup warp drive, backup bridge, leftover parts. Uh, the quality of manually crafted modules is not the best, but our engineers can sometimes craft interesting pieces. Various leftover parts assembled into a functional module. So th this is just one random module. Let's get that. Uh, backup reactor. Extra container. This would store metal and synthetics. Okay. 
defense system. Uh, a random backup weapon. Some weapons. I'm not sure what kind of weapons we start with here. We may not start with anything. So maybe we should get a... Uh, a lasers upgrade. Improves the ship's main lasers. No, we must start with some default weapons. Alright, let's get a... Um oh, actually, I was reading this wrong. We only have one fate point left. Okay, so we'll get the laser. And then we have one fate point left. Let's spend that into... The swearing robot? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so there we go. We got six crew, one pet, eight drones. We are a, a ship full of drones here. We have a little survivor, simple digital pet, a, uh, all AI based on a mix of cat and dog consciousness, no abilities except swift movement and speaking. There's our little survivor, the swearing robot, our two fire extinguishers, our two new recruits, Satur Saturnia and Obreen, little Buddhist, our little pet cat. Uh, with um, evolved thumbs and evolved brain, our Fumer Machina. That's our repair bot. Then we have our four default gunners and then our four default crew members. All right, let's go ahead and start our game here. A malfunction in our ship's warp drive has landed us in deep space, stranded away from all possibility of refueling. Our only option was to freeze ourselves and accelerate towards the closest star. Five years later, we need to find the shortest way home. The shortest way to Earth. Alright, modules received from perks are currently inside storage. I've defrozen some of the crew and assigned them to operate various modules. You may want to optimize this before we start moving. I've also completed calculating the shortest route back to Earth. The journey goes through 10 sectors of mostly unexplored space. Each of those sectors will contain an ancient one-way warp gate built by precursors before our time. The warp gates are usually controlled by the dominant faction over of each sector. We must convince whoever is guarding them to let us through. I've marked the intergalactic warp gate of this system on our sector map. Try to explore every star system on the way to maximize our survival chances. Okay. So our mission, top right, collect resources before entering the exit warp gate to the next sector. So this is our star system map. This is our ship layout. We'll take a look at that in a second. We have a sector map. So we can travel to all these different star systems. And there's the exit right there. So as you can tell, if you've played FTL, this is very similar uh, in uh, this kind of layout. Uh, however, there are some um, fairly significant differences I found just in my hour and a half of playing. Alright, so let's take a look at our ship here. So we have our industrial nukes that we're starting with up front. We have two of those. We have a tiger point defense, which I guess covers the entire ship. Tiger point defense intercepts asteroids incoming missiles slower projectiles and approaching borders short range cannon shoot at enemy ships cannot shoot at enemy ships so it's got all of our um the reload time it's got our cover radius the damage and ship asteroid defense bonus okay our nukes here capital missile for shattering colossal asteroids or uh, micro moons with kinetic force, well armored, but has a very small area of effect. Okay. We have our non combat sensor. So, this actually allows us to see around our ship. So, I think with the, um, uh, the better your sensor is, the wider your range of visibility is. So, uh, since we can see this planet within our sensor range, we have a little bit of information on it. Uh, these ones outside of our sensor range, we don't really know what's going on there. So this is a planet with an atmosphere. We can definitely check that out in a second. Let's close our little help tip tab. In our storage, uh, we have our do-it-yourself science lab and our exotics and explosive storage. 
Okay, so that's these are the ran or this is the random module that we got, and then this is our science lab. Let's install our science lab somewhere. You can see these green empty bays, which we only have one of, is where we can install something into. So let's put our science lab in there. And let's actually select our scientist here. Who, if we sort by science skill, Oh, we have a couple with a uh, high science skill, but we will put our scientist Obrien to work in the science bay. Now, right now it doesn't have enough power. We may want to find where our reactor is here. Okay, so it's providing 10 power. And then I think we have another reactor here providing 15 power. We go down to our power toggle down here we can see that we are using all of our power right now uh, but we don't have enough to power this science bay so we may want to let's deactivate our defense system right now we can reactivate that once we actually get into a battle and Okay, that looks good. Let's go back. So our science bay is now functional and he is going to create, as you can see here, six credits per 100 RU. If we go back to our star map, you can see RU is the distance. So you can see distance 34 RU, 33, 32. So the more we travel around, that's how we'll start creating the credits in the lab over time. And we've also got, so we get the six per 100 RU, then we get plus one research skill point, uh, or one research skill point gives one credit per uh, 100 RU. If multiple operators can work and guard in their skill points are added together. One credit per 100 RU, one research skill point. So I think since we have six, where's our science skill? So we have six. So six plus six credits per research operation and events, six credit production in research module. So six, so I think we get, um, oh, that's just the total six, is it? We'll have to keep an eye on that, see how that works. Okay. Anyway, that's our science module. We have our bridge up here. Uh, so they kind of control, if we take them out, you can see some of these modules aren't powered now. So when people are in the bridge, they're able to power some of these uh, uh, automatic systems. If we take them out again, see they turn off. So this is our shield generator. Let's go back to our crew. And this is our shield skill. So we should actually put this guy from the bridge into the shield. He should work there, that's his specialty. Let's go back to our crew. Let's sort by, sort by bridge skill. So we got our best person in the bridge right now. That's good. I think we'll just run with one person for the time being. Uh, what else we got? We got weapons, of course. We have our industrial laser two. Actually, we have two industrial lasers here. Okay, and they are both manned. Oh, and this one's actually... This one is manned by one of the drones. Oh, so the drones can actually man these. That's nice. So we got industrial industrial missile platform, industrial laser two. So we have actually three lasers. Cool. And our uh, defense system here, which doesn't have power. And we have our one bot, which is actually a little bit hurt. Uh, where's our bot repair station? I think it's over here. Yeah, drone repair. So let's send our one drone there. And he should heal up. Nice. 
And we'll send him back to operate that once we get some more power. We have... Is this our... Yeah, that's our cat. So our cat can actually operate uh, some things. Uh, they will just randomly stop, though. If we look at our cat here, he's got basic s skill in bridge, basic skill in shield. And actually, no, we can't assign this crew because there's no... Okay, because someone's already there. Gotcha. And then basic screw, uh, skill in uh, warp drive. This is our warp drive here. Uh, back here, we have more... Um, uh, containers, one for our fuel tank, one for uh, fuel, organics, and exotics. Back here is our engine. Uh, another container here for metal, synthetics, and armor, or uh, sorry, ammo. And then another uh, do it yourself point defense system. So this one needs to be manned as well. So you know what? Let's take this robot, this drone, and throw them back there. And then I think we're pretty happy with how this is laid out. Let's save all these locations for peace and wartime. Um, we can modify that later. Let's take a look at the rest of our crew here. We'll just go to gunnery skill. Uh, this guy's actually still in cryo sleep. Uh, and he is a good gunner. So we should probably wake him up. Uh, let's go ahead and decryo this guy. And you know what? We're going to put him onto a gun. So these drones will have three. Let's take one of our crew members off a weapon who doesn't have a good skill. Like maybe this, this guy here. Maybe you can go on the bridge for now. And where did this other guy go to? Is this guy right here? Yeah, let's send him right there. Okay. And this guy, he's actually good at the scanners. So maybe we should switch these guys out. This guy is good at repairs. So maybe, well, we have a repair drone. He's also good at science. Let's put him in the science lab. So we can have two people in there. All right, now we're making 10. Okay, cool, cool. So let's go ahead and resave these. All right, I think we're happy. Let's go to the star map. And let's go visit our first location. So we're going to check out Mistus 4, a planet with an atmosphere. Oh, we were hit by an asteroid. Nice. First first trip and we're, we're already hit and we have a fire. Uh, the planet is covered with ruins of primitive, probably digital age civilization. Particular crates, uh, craters on the surface indicate that possibility of that uh, this civilization might have wiped themselves out in a nuclear war. Uh, so let's prospect and send scavenge. Uh, prospect and scavenge will send a crew. Uh, looks like our drones are going to go put out that fire. Nuclear detonation. One of our salvage crews somehow triggered an ancient atomic bomb during the operation. The, oh no, we lost... Did we lose crew members? The person vaporized instantly and others received serious injuries. Oh, we lost someone. What? <laughs> we lost someone on our first planet, plus some um, resources. Who did we lose? Oh my god. That was horrible. Horrible start. While leaving the planet, one of our intersystem uh, exploration blasts discovered that the nearby moon has an ancient structure. Alright, let's investigate with the mothership. That sucks. The structure was an automated military complex researching exotic weapons. It attacks us as we approach, but our counterfire destroyed it, all its weapons. Uh, the remaining ruins yielded considerable salvage. So we lost four uh, ship hit points. 
We found a module, we got some fuel, we got some metal, some synthetics, some explosives, some exotics, and some uh, Xeno data, some credits. All right, so we got some damage on our ship here. Uh, here's what we found. Uh, a do-yourself exotic ray projector. Ooh. Does high damage to uh, to crew members, it looks like. Okay, let's store it in our storage locker. It is uh, quite damaged, so we'd have to repair this. Minor uh, integrity damage. Uh, you were hit by an asteroid, want to see how to avoid that in the future. Um, sure. High danger of asteroid impacts. So fly out of these little clusters. Okay. Cool. Who did we lose? Hope we didn't lose our scientist. Okay, so we still have our gunner, our good gunner. We still have our scientist. Um, I'm not sure who we lost. Do we have our adventurer? Yeah, that's our adventurer. So we have our two people that we bought. Oh, it's our shield guy. No, our scanner guy. Damn it. So we go back to the star system. Oh no, we still have our scanner running. I guess it's an automated system. Okay. Maybe we don't need to have someone running here, operated by the bridge. Uh, so it's a little bit better if we do have someone manning it. Is that right? Increased by sensor skill of 10% uh, per operator sensor skill. Okay, okay. so that's what we lost. Uh, we do have some injured individuals though, so let's go ahead and send our bots to the med bays or to the repair stations. We'll send uh, these people. Actually, we don't have a med bay. We'd have to put them into cryo sleep to actually um, get them to heal. We'll heal, we'll heal up our bots though, because that's easy enough to do. And how bad are these guys? Eight of nine, seven of ten. This guy got hurt quite a bit. Let's actually send him into a uh, cryo. So there'll be a chance of him to heal. Uh, let's send people back. Oh, he's gonna wake up. Okay, hold on. You go back in there. All right, everyone back to their station. Okay, let's uh, continue on here. That was a uh, very unfortunate start to our adventure. All right, so should we go to the ring planet or this planet? Uh, let's go to this planet first. Oh, we have another fire? Where'd that fire come from? Shit was hit by an asteroid. Okay, hold on. Where? Oh, this is that asteroid belt. Okay, so hold on. Let's get out of this asteroid belt. I see what they mean now. Okay, we'll fly out of the asteroid belt. Fly to this planet, planet with an ast uh, atmosphere, Mistus 7. Let's check that out. Thick forests cover this planet. Looks like a good spot for harvesting some organics. All right, let's explore it. Take five fuel. Most of the local organisms produce a non-carbon resin that prevents turning the local vegetation into readily consumable organics. However, we could process it into explosives on the spot. Hmm, that might be nice. Uh, right now we have 260 to 300 or, uh, explosives. So we don't have a lot of extra room. So we could research it, or we could research and process the resin. That takes 60 synthetics. We only have 64, so let's just research it. Uh, we leave the unique ecosystem of the planet untouched, except for a few small scientific samples. So we got 51 credits and one fate point. All right, good enough. Uh, let's see outside of this asteroid belt. We'll go check out this here, which looks like it could be a ship. We might have our first encounter here. Shipwreck, active technology. All right, let's take a look at our uh, person here. Is he healed up any? Um, we can't really tell can we oh he's still seven of ten okay we'll leave him in there 
And let's go check out the shipwreck. Our sensors detect active technology within the wreckage, but no life. The active systems could be automated defenses. Print disposable bots uh, for a closer look. We'll take 20 synthetics. Or we can investigate the chip. Let's, we're going to risk it. It's not going to throw all the bad stuff at us, right? It's going to give us some breaks. I hope. Well-preserved shipwreck. The active technology was just backup memory systems running at minimal capacity. Two of the ship's modules are completely intact. No bodies discovered. We scrapped the entire vessel and recovered our printed disposable bots as well. Awesome. So we got two more modules. We got an exotic. We got some credits. We got one fuel. Some metals and some more synthetics. Perfect. All right, let's check out these uh, modules we picked up here. Long range uh, sensor, old. So affects 800 RU versus our 700 RU. So that might be worth uh, swapping that out. Takes four power. That takes one power. Oh, that takes a lot more power. Okay, maybe not. And then we have converted ancient to mini cannon. All right, well, let's store all those. Take a closer look at this one. So damage wise, I think this one does a bit more damage. All right, maybe our lasers do. Damage to modules, number of shots times damage value of shot. So two times two. So four damage, I guess. Whereas this one's just three. 12 seconds versus nine second shot time. This one, yeah, ours is more accurate. Ours is uh, faster, does more damage. Yeah, I think ours are, are better. Okay. We'll hold on to it for now. Maybe we can sell it later on. Back to the star map. Uh, so we've visited these two planets. We're at the shipwreck. We need to go visit uh, this one here. Quickest way there would be straight through the asteroid field, though. So. Oh, here's our where we uh, lost someone. Memorial service. Damn. That's what we lost. I don't know if I want to waste a bunch of fuel flying around, or should we just risk it going through? Let's risk it going through. Hopefully we don't get hit by an asteroid. Oh, unknown object detected in the asteroid belt. Mistus 8, fuel elements found in the atmosphere. General atmosphere conditions are stable, but few large plasma storms have been detected. So let's harvest some fuel, or attempt to. Mining process went smoothly. And we got 96 fuel. All right. Let's check out uh, this here. You know what? We should probably have our defense systems activated when we're going through these uh, fields. So let's take one of our bots off of there. Put them over here. We'll cycle the power off for this. Cycle this one back on. And let's save this as peacetime. Okay. That might protect us a bit more going through these asteroid belts. Alright, let's go check out the unknown object. Uh, we'll just fly up to it first, maybe on the outskirts of the asteroid belt. Just a metal object. Okay, let's go check it out. It's a lost cargo container with old earth design. Mundane commercial supplies. Let's open it. Metal object. The container held a package of recreational consumables. So we have one module. So an exotics pack. A selection of exotic substances consumed resp uh, responsibly, responsibly provides exotics when scrapped. Let's go ahead and scrap that. Okay, we got five exotics from that. Cool. Okay. So that's everywhere in this system. Let's go jump to our sector map. We have uh, explored three or three planets. 
Let's head down to this one here. So we've got two planets here, plus one fleet. This one has a trade signal. Uh, trade signal, two planets, a fleet, ship repairs available. Let's go here. We gotta get our first encounter. Organic Trader, Insectoid Alliance, Noble Fellow Consciousnesses. Consciousness? Let us trade forms of matter and energy for mutual ascension. Our fleet will be leaving this star after this trade, so this is truly a once in an egg time offer. So we could get 150 organics for 100 credits. All right. We could barter to get 100 organics for two exotics. Or we could sell 55 credits for one exotic. Um, what about... I don't know if we need more food right now. We're doing all right for food, I think. Get 55 credits for, for one exotic. Let's let's sell an exotic. So we have a lot of exotics. We have nine. There we go. Please accept this small gift as an additional token of our generosity. The alien has gifted us a collection of ceremonial egg holders made of silver. All right. Cool. Thanks, bud. Oh, and here comes an enemy ship. Approaching fleet. A small fleet of ships is approaching in the tactical weapons range. They are using some kind of auxiliary jamming device and decoys to make the exact contents of their fleet unclear from this range. Open the comms channel. A rat pirate. This is nothing personal. We just need to feed our families. Then would you take our friendly donation of 100 organics? What you need is less and prepare for battle. Okay, I'm not giving these guys anything. We're going to fight. This is our first encounter, guys. Okay, so, again, very similar to FTL. Uh, one difference that you might notice right off the bat is we have this little um, scanner at the top right. Uh, now, from what I can remember, it's been a while since I've played FTL, but I don't think you could have more than one enemy at a time. Uh, but in this game, you can, I think, from the looks of it, you can be surrounded by enemies. So, that's kind of cool. Uh, we could take a look at their ship here. Uh, it gives us some details down at the bottom. We got 25 HP, 12 shield, uh, power used 19 of 28. So they got a few good reactors on there. Ship deflection is 34%, ship evasion 20%, ship wide accuracy bonus is plus 1%, and they have 10 crew. Okay, so we got one of our weapons offline. Let's. Turn this off and divert power to our weapon. And let's see here. These people are all working. Do I have someone I can put on here? This is without power now to our, our science lab. So let's take them or maybe does this guy have better gunnery? Not really. All right, well, I just need someone on gunnery, so. Let's put you there. Okay. So we get that armed. Now we have all our weapons available to us. I think what we want to do is focus on either their shields uh, so we got shield battery here. They got their warp drive there. They have a generator there, a reactor. Another reactor down here. Uh, defense system. Turrets. Where are their shields? It's the engine, fuel tank, explosive storage. EMP ray gun. Ooh. Should probably be taking that out. I got some big guns on this thing. Uh, the sensor. Where's the shield? Am I, what, what am I not looking at here? Is it just the shield battery? Maybe? I don't see any other um, shield option here. This is the command bridge. Okay, well... Uh, so we got laser, laser, uh, there's our missile platform, so our missiles will ignore shields, uh, actually all our weapons will ignore shields, won't they? 
No. Actually, our lasers won't ignore shields. Okay, so we should be sending our missile then in here first. So this uh, square is kind of the, the potential um, area of, a f of where the missile could hit. So you kind of want to keep this on the ship. Like if you have some outside the ship, it could potentially miss completely. So let's do... Let's do right here so we have a chance of hitting the generator, um, the shield, battery. Okay, and then we'll just start also just firing at um, maybe their generators with our lasers. So we have a chance of uh, just wearing down their, their shield over time I guess. So we'll do two on, on those two generators and then we'll do another one. What's the biggest weapon here? Probably this guy right here, this big gun. Go one right there. Okay, so we're firing all of our weapons here. We do have our two nukes that we could use if need be. We only have two of them though, so uh, let's start with this. And we'll see how we do. Now our shield should be pretty good. Okay, so we did, uh, looks like take out one of their generators. So, or the reactor. So that's good, so they should, yeah, they've lost power to some systems, including their shield battery. So let's, let's take out their shield battery. So if they fix this, their shield will be down. All right, now I know I'm kind of going outside the range there, but um, we're gonna do that. We're gonna focus on their guns as well. Actually, let's go right here so we have a chance of hitting several. And then this will also fo focus there. And then our missile platform, let's take out their other generator, other reactor there. Okay. All right, so our um, shield is actually uh, uh, over overloaded right now, it looks like. So, I'm not sure if there's anything we can do there. Is there just a cooldown here? Disabled because of overload for 4.3 seconds. Okay. So we've taken down their shield. Oh god. What is this? Is that a boarding ship? Yeah, it is. Okay. So we got people boarding. Let's put a few of these um, drones onto security assignments. We have taken some damage. I should, but we do have our repair drone out, right? Our repair drone should be repairing. Yeah, he should be going around. But he is not. Let's click on some things for this little guy to repair during the fight. Here comes the boarding party. Oh, and it uh, was actually destroyed. That's good. Uh, one of our nukes has been disabled here. I think we're doing okay, though. Uh, they are in rough shape right now. We've taken down all their power. So let's... How much they got left for HP here? 11. Let's try and take out their... Uh, their bridge. Okay. And... We'll continue to focus this one on their weapons. And then this one, we will maybe take out their warp drive so they can't escape. Okay. So they may try to escape. Oh, and we blew them up. Okay, good. Fantastic. Salvage complete. Our utility bots have salvaged all resources left on the battlefield. We got one module. Uh, be nice if it was one of those reactors. And then some other resources too. 
Uh, we have a light laser. Okay. We'll store it. Our uh, bot's going around to do some repairs here. So this does take uh, synthetics doing these repairs. So it's nice that we were able to pick up some. Okay, let's save that as our wartime and then let's send people back for peacetime operations. Okay, cool. All right, let's do one more encounter. Actually, you know what? Hmm, we've already got a pretty decent length episode here. Um, let's just see what we got. We'll check out one more location here. We are at a planet, so let's go check out Ardite 10, a hot planet. This planet features extreme temperatures and intense volcanic activity. Initial scans suggest possible uh, valuable minerals. Let's prospect with six fuel. Oh god, ship discovered. Our boss discovered the atmospheric activity is too unpredictable to start a mining operation on this planet. However, they found a small, crash-landed civilian ship with our engineers quickly scavenged. Incredibly, some of its technology is still usable. Another module. What is this? A synthetics container large. Oh. Cool. All right, let's take it. All right, let's go. One more planet. One more planet. Off we go. A lifeless planet. Ruins of advanced urban landscapes can be seen from orbit. It looks like a war zone between some of the elder species. No sign of life detected. Immense size gives the planet a high gravity field. We'll explore. 15 fuel. Broken habitation domes dot the landscape. Signs of thermal, nuclear, and heavy energy warfare are visible everywhere. This place could be full of hazardous conflicts. Uh, ha full of hazardous conflict remains. Unknown urban technology patterns require the presence of crew for a successful salvage mission. Okay, well, let's send our crew. Ancient warbots. Our scavengers were ambushed. And it uh, looks like we got injured. I don't think we lost anyone, though. We decided to leave this planet after recovering the surviving operatives and what little they gathered. Okay, so not the best. Not the best. We took some damage there. Took some damage. All right, let's send this guy into the cryo chamber as well. Send our bots to go get Fixed up. Would be good to get a med bay. And looks like we got another bot here that could use some repairs. So that does it for our first episode. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, leave me some comments down below. What do you think? Uh, for those of you who have played this game or played FTL, I would like to hear your thoughts. I think it's pretty interesting, though. Um... There are definitely some differences from FDL, which is nice. Uh, let's, uh, let's stick around for maybe some more episodes in the near future. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, I'll talk to you all later.